The Syrian situation is going before the Senate. The U.S. Uh, State and Defense Secretaries will be making uh, their case in front of Congress today that military intervention is the right thing to do. Jessica Hume is live in Ottawa with more on that. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning, Pat. Uh, yes, as you mentioned, this is going to be a big day. Indeed, a, probably a big week in terms of what's happening in Syria. So the uh, American Senate Foreign Relations Committee meets today. Uh, this is, of course, where we're going to see Secretary of State John Kerry, as well as the Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel, really making their case for military intervention in uh, Syria. So as we saw on Saturday, the American President Barack Obama, he said he was going to seek the approval of Congress before launching any military strikes against Syria. Of course, we know that Congress doesn't reconvene until September 9th. So this is part of the reason for holding uh, holding these meetings that we're going to see today. So um, also this weekend, we heard from two uh, fairly hawkish American senators, John McCain and Lindsey Graham. They had initially uh, really um, said that they weren't going to support Obama, who had talked about limited strikes. Uh, Obama's intention here was uh, to have no troops on the ground, very limited, highly targeted strikes within Syria. Both uh, John McCain and Lindsey Graham felt that this was not going far enough, that they wouldn't support any kind of intervention unless the ultimate end game was Assad's removal. So, uh, of course, they seem to soften their line a little bit. And I'd say the conclusion out of yesterday's meeting that those two had with Barack Obama is they seem to lend rather conditional support to what he's uh, what he's talking about here. So let's take a listen to Senator McCain talking a little bit a bit about his point of view on Syria. That if we can degrade, as I mentioned, and upgrade, uh, then I think we have a chance. But we need to see that plan. We need to see that strategy articulated. We also have to make it clear that a vote against this would be catastrophic in its consequences, not only as far as this issue is concerned, but in the future. And if you can't see the connection between Syria and Iran, you're blind at a time when history needs for you to have good eyesight. The connection between Syria and Iran is clear as a bell. To disconnect these two would be a huge foreign policy, national security mistake. And I hope the president, above all else, will make that connection. So, Pat, the Syrian ambassador to the United Nations wrote a letter uh, yesterday, sorry, on Sunday, uh, to Ban Ki-moon. And this was a letter really pushing for him to uh, ask for a political solution and also asking the United Nations to stop any aggression against their country. So uh, that certainly didn't stop the Israeli defense forces from moving into positions along the Syrian border over the weekend. They also called up reservists. So we know that Israel is clearly preparing for any imminent attack. And this isn't entirely surprising. We've heard from the Syrian army. Uh, they're saying that any attack launched against them is going to be interpreted by them as a license to launch a full-scale attack against Israel. Of course, this is the kind of thing that mobilizes various elements within the region. And we also heard from Iran over the weekend. Um, not surprisingly, it was a bit of a threat. Uh, the, their ability to follow through, of course, remains to be seen. But what we heard from the head of the Parliamentary Committee on National Security in Iran was pr pretty much a guarantee that any strikes in, in Syria will not be confined to the borders of that country. He guaranteed that there will be repercussions across the region. So a lot of elements at play here, Pat, uh, and I think lots, um, lots more to come out just over the course of today on what's happening next in terms of any military intervention in Syria. No question, Jessica. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, let's uh, build on two of those topics. Uh, we've actually crossed an alarming threshold today in the middle of this uh, rising tension in Syria. While the international community weighs options for that military strike she was uh, referencing, the number of refugees from the war-torn country has now passed the 2 million mark. UN says the number of Syrian refugees has skyrocketed dramatically over the past year because of the ongoing violence. The mass exodus is placing a heavy burden on neighboring countries that are taking them in. And as she points out, things are heating up in Syria. There are reports the U.S. has carried out a joint missile test with Israel in the Mediterranean, testing an anchor target missile used in anti-missile systems. 